know where you're watching from. I was praying for you today and I, I really felt like the Lord say, say these words, may I help you. And so the Lord's been helping me in these difficult times. And so I wanted to share with you what he's been sharing with me. And I hope that it can help you as well. So uh, anyway, one of the things that's happening right now is we are really battling what can, what, what can we believe? Because there's, there's so much false information and people are distrusting. And I really want to deal with how do we deal with doubt, unbelief, and fear, and the anxiety that comes from it. And because you don't want to get like shameful and like, oh, I doubted. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I thought it was this way. And it turns out it's, you know, another way. Do not, please do not, do not let that shame and guilt cause any confusion uh, in your life. And, and don't let it uh, bring doubt. That's why today I'm going to say, may I help you? I believe I have a word. It's not going to be long, but I think it's going to help you. Okay. I want to talk to you about prophets. Okay. The scripture says that prophets prophesy in part and they look through a glass dimly. And, and what happens is when you prophesy out a word and, and all of us have, have the gift of prophecy. I mean, you're born again. It says all shall prophesy, but when prophets speak out words, we don't want to come against the, the, the prophets. Yeah. We don't want to be condemning them because in order to get the prophets reward, we, we need to be standing by faith. And we're in that place right now. We're in that place where the Lord is taking over. The Lord is moving and the Lord's going to do some things where you know what? He may not even reveal it through his prophets. You know, Jesus said, only my father in heaven knows this. And, and I think we're kind of maybe in one of those seasons of time where the Lord's holding his cards close and he's getting ready to do something. Am I positive? Absolutely. Is it going to be rough? Absolutely. Uh, I prophesied to you that it was going to be 11th hour, 59 minutes and 59 seconds in the midst of a category five hurricane of fear. And that has turned out to be correct. But I want to go to probably one of the greatest prophets, John the Baptist. So I want to break this down, and I hope that it ministers to you as much as it's ministered to me, okay? So first of all, we're going to go to the book of John, and we're going to go to, uh, verse, uh, we're going to go to verse 1 and 29, Okay. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. I'll be reading out of the New King James. Go ahead in the uh, comments. Let me know where, where you're watching from. Oh, I'm going to do something. I am going to switch the screen to so today, okay? And I'm going to explain to you at the very end why you should consider sowing today, okay? Don't think about it right now. I'm just putting it out there. There's a reason why you would sow today versus tomorrow or next week, okay? But anyway, I'll bring that up in a minute. So here's John the Baptist. Then the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold the Lamb of God, okay? So here he is as a prophet. He is saying, behold the Lamb of God. Now, did John the Baptist, uh, did he know Jesus? Well, absolutely, he's his cousin. He actually met him when he was in... Uh, he was in Elizabeth's womb and Mary's womb, and they came together, and both of the babies leaped in the womb. So John the Baptist knows who his cousin Jesus is, but he now all of a sudden gets revelation as a prophet, and in order to activate him, he says in verse 29, behold the Lamb of God. Okay, this is the prophet John the Baptist. Verse 30 says, this is he whom I said after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. So now John the Baptist is prophesying about Jesus that he was before him. Why? Because Jesus is the word. And so it goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. He was before him. When God said, let us create man in our image, it was God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was prophesying. And so John is prophetically in code. He's saying he was before me, okay? Even though John the Baptist was born physically before Jesus, he's saying he was before me. So he says, before, he, he's, he's saying in prophetic language, 
behold, take hold, or come in agreement with, or believe in him, he's the Lamb of God. Don't believe in me, John the Baptist, believe in him, okay? And then he said he was before me. And verse 31 says, I did not know him, that he should be revealed to Israel, therefore I came baptizing with water. So what he's saying is, listen, when I started baptizing Israel in water, in an immersion, to prepare them for something big that was coming, he goes, even I didn't know it. He said, I didn't know it, but today I'm saying to you, whoa, behold the Lamb of God. And behold, I'm not only prophesying that, but I'm getting revelation now on my own in my head going, wow, not only is he the Lamb of God, but boom, I prophesy it, revelation comes, and when the revelation comes, he was before me. And so now what's happening is he is leading up. He's not saying, but in John's spirit, he's starting to realize this is the son of God. Okay. You know, he's, he's not saying it yet, but all that revelation of him being obedient as a prophet to speak it. Now revelation comes and then he starts to try to explain to, to help people. Okay. So now I'm going to go to, uh, let's see. Um, okay. And okay. And I want to go here again where he says it again, because I don't like building just off one scripture. Let's go to, uh, John one 35 and 36. And it says again, the next day, John stood with his two disciples and said, and look at Jesus as he walked. He said, behold, the lamb of God. And the two disciples heard what he had spoke and they followed Jesus, okay? So now the second time he prophesies that Jesus is this one that he calls, behold, take hold of the Lamb of God, he loses two people out of his ministry. And he doesn't care because he's prophesying, see what it says? And look at Jesus as he walked. And he, he so he's looking at Jesus as he walked and he said, behold the Lamb of God, the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. So the prophetic word should cause you to shift into a new season or in this case, a new era where you're going on to a higher level. So they went from the baptizer of water and to following the baptizer of fire, okay? And um, I also think it's interesting that he when, he, when he talked about, he said, I didn't know him but he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing in water. I think what's happening right now, just prophetically speaking, and with Israel on lockdown again, it's very sad for, it's, it was two weeks, but now like a week and a half more to go. Uh, the stress on our ministry financially for supporting all that we need to support in Israel, with Israel on lockdown and people unemployed and the Holocaust survivors needing food, and then the people that work for us needing help and, and the people, the whole thing, it's the need is great. And I understand that we can't fix it all, but this is a great time for us to be able to extend the love of God to Yeshua, uh, of Yeshua to the Jewish people because their hearts are very tender because they're under a tremendous amount of poverty and pressure and lockdowns and, uh, you know, uh, there's curfews. It, it's really bad in Israel. But anyway, I didn't mean to go there. But I, I wanted to share with you when he said, when, the, when you behold the Lamb of God, he realized that this Lamb of God was coming to reveal himself to Israel as well. And I wanted to say that to you as we share. And I hope this is helping you as well. Now, I want to go to uh, the book of Luke. And let's go to Luke chapter 7, verse 18. Okay. Because I hope this, I hope this will help you. Now, now let's. I tell you what. Let's go to Matthew three seventeen. Matthew chapter three verse seventeen. Okay. Now remember, I just want to focus on this part. Here's John. He's baptizing him, right? And Jesus comes. I don't want to go into all the scriptures. He says, "Listen, I'm not worthy." Jesus says, "Listen, John." You've got to baptize me to make this right. So what he's doing is he's aligning the priesthood. It's important that I get watered, mikvahed, and immersed. Not here to teach on that. I want you to get this. So John's there. He realizes he's not worthy to even untie his sandals to let him get into the water. And then he gets in the water and uh, 
And, and so when he gets in the water, it says, and when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And suddenly the voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. So now John has this major experience where he sees the dove come down. He's baptizing his cousin. He said, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He baptizes him. And this is like nobody else that he's ever baptized because man, the heavens open and God's voice, an audible voice comes from heaven and says this, this is my beloved son. So now John the baptized started this whole movement with behold the lamb of God. And then he's realizing, you know what? He came before me, not really knowing in total what that means. He baptizes him in water. It opens up the heavens. And then after it opens up the heavens, then God says and activates him and says, this is my son. So now John has been through all this. John the prophet has seen these miracles, the signs and wonders, the leaping before he was born. He was raised with them. He saw all the, all the stuff. He saw the miracles. And now let's go to Luke 18, 1 and 8. And I hope this is where it may help you. Okay. All right. If this is helping you, uh, if this is helping you, please go into the comments and say, this is helping me. All right. Okay. Let me go to Luke. Chapter 18. Hallelujah. I'll be reading out of the New King James here. Hallelujah. Oh, you know what? I gave you the wrong scripture. Scripture. Let's go to Luke 7. 718. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, here we are. Luke 718. Okay, so now John's in prison. Okay? The prophet is in prison. He had prophesied all these things. He had experienced all these miracles. And look what happens. John 7, I mean, Luke 7, 18. Then the disciple of John reported him concerning all things. And John called his two disciples to him and sent them to Jesus saying, are you the coming one or do we look for another? So here's John. He's the one that prophesied, behold, the Lamb of God. He was the one that was there that immersed Jesus. He was the one there when God ascended like a dove, spoke and said it was his son. Now he's in jail with doubt and unbelief. He's questioning. And it says, when men come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, you are the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour, he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, evil spirits, and many blind. He gave them sight. Verse 22, and Jesus answered them, answered and said to them, go tell John this. Now, a normal response would have been, listen, uh, John the Baptist is in jail. He's having a little, some doubts. He sent us out. You, you know us. You know, we used to work with him. Now we're working with you. And he asked us to come to you. Are you the coming one or do we look for another? And he could have just like commonly said, well, of course I'm the coming one. Listen, John was there. He was the one that said, behold, the Lamb of God. He was the one that I said, listen, we got to get in the water together. He was the one that immersed me. He was the one that was there. Man, when the heavens opened, who knows, man, probably singing angels. And like, we don't know, but I mean, it must have been awesome. A dove, the spirit of the Lord ascends like a dove. And then God speaks from heaven. Behold, my son and who I'm well pleased. I mean, like, and so, so he could have said, well, of course I'm the one. That's not what he said. See, see, John the prophet prophesied it, and now he's doubting his own prophecy. Okay? And this is what Jesus said. He said, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. 
that the blind see, the blind walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And then here's the instruction, and this is my word for you today. Verse 23. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. That is the key when you say, Kurt, when I say to you, may I help you? I'm going to help you with something that is going to absolutely protect you before this election. It's going to protect you before the 20th. And this is the word of the Lord. Don't get offended. Don't start speaking against your own faith. Come on. If this is helping you, say, I won't do it. Don't start doubting what you've said. Don't start doubting what you prayed. Don't start doubting what other prophets have said. Don't, don't do the prophets no harm. Please, please. Don't. And I, I am not defending me as a prophet, and I'm not defending the prophets. I, I, that's not, it's not how I, it's not my ministry. But I'm telling you, John the Baptist was a way better prophet, way greater prophet than me or any of the other prophet friends I have. And I've met some of the biggest and the best. But compared to John the Baptist, we're all um, pretty small. But if John the Baptist was going to his disciples and said, listen, I'm having some questions. You know what? It's been a while since I was in the water. It's been a while since I saw him walking and I said, behold, the Lamb of God. And now I'm in this really bad prison type situation. Things aren't going well in the prison. I'm hearing the guards talk, trash talk Jesus, and they're trash talking me. And tra I'm in here. I'm hearing all this stuff. I'm hearing people screaming. And, you know, I, I'm in here and I kind of, you know, in the spirit, kind of feeling like they're getting ready to kill me. You know, it's just not, I just need to know something. So what's happening is, here is a man who is a prophet of God who literally heard the audible voice of God, and now he's doubting himself. That's part of being a prophet. That's why we have to stay encouraged. That's why we have to stay persistent. That's why we have to stay in love. Please love each other. Please do not cause delay in God's words in your life. You're not going to listen. God's in control of the United States. God's in control of all the nations, okay? And God's going to pull this off, and this is all up to God. But we have to stay in faith. We have to stay away from doubt. We have to stay away from unbelief. We have to walk in love. But we also, you and I, go ahead and be honest, and let's extend some grace to each other. Like, you know what? When I was in the prison, I had to send a couple of disciples out. Do you really think this that God is in control here? Because, you know what? It, it is... It is, you know, I know that that Kurt said 11th hour, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. I'm getting kind of tired of checking my watch and it seems to be getting worse by the minute. Yeah, but he did say we're going to have category five like spirit of fear. Well, hmm. let's do this. I want to take you to a word I shared at House of David Friday night, part of it. I want you to go to Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And this is what we're going to do. This is who we should be. Okay. So I'm going to read this out of the uh, Passion Translation. Okay. This is uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. One day, Jesus taught the apostles to keep praying and never stop or lose hope. He shared them with an illustration. I, I love the style of Yeshua's teaching. I love parables. I, I just, I like storytelling. I, I like it. I can see myself sitting there going, you know, I can see like right now there's a bunch of you. You came to my house. Okay, we're sitting in my living room in front of the fire. And, and we're all having discussions about what's going to happen in the, in the next two weeks. And, uh, and can you imagine we're sitting there at my house and, and we're sitting there, we all have coffee and iced tea, and we're sitting there. And uh, and you said, well, Kurt, you know, I know you brought us here for this meeting. We're going to have a little bit of fellowship. And I said, yeah, I've got a guest speaker coming. And uh, Jewish guy. Um, in fact, there's a knock. And, you know, he's, he's coming in. Let, let's have him sit, at, sit down. And so I want to introduce you to this rabbi, Yeshua. And can you imagine? It's in this time. 
Okay, it's right now. It's today. And he sits down with his disciples and he says, I want to share an illustration with you that will help you to position yourself for the next couple of weeks, for your whole life. But for the next two weeks, let me tell you a story about a widow woman. In a certain town, there was a judge, a thick-skinned, godless man who had no fear of others' opinions. And there was a poor widow woman in the town who kept pleading with the judge, grant me justice, protect me from my oppressors. He ignored her plea for quite some time, but she kept asking. And eventually he said to her, this widow keeps annoying me, demanding her right and I'm tired of listening to her, even though I'm not a religious man, I don't care about, about the opinions of others. I'll just get her off my back by answering her claims for justice and I'll rule in her favor. Then she will leave me alone. Mm, ask and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find knock and the door shall be open. Do you know, I was saying in the house of David Friday night, prayer is annoying to the enemy. It annoys him just like this unjust judge. The Lord continued. Can you imagine we're sitting in my living room and Jesus is sitting down right in front of the fireplace and he's telling us, yeah, there was this case very similar to your situation right now. Man, they had these different judges and man, they were ungodly and didn't care about other people's opinions. They already had their opinion made. In fact, listen, th this poor widow woman, she's poor. She has no authority. She has no leverage. She's, she's not a, a large influencer in any way, but my God. Gosh, is she annoying. She just keeps knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. And eventually, even the unjust judge said, you know what? I'm going to rule in her favor just to get her to go away. That's a word for us. The Lord continued, do you hear what an ungodly judge said? That he would answer her and pers her persistent request? Do you not know that God, the true judge, will grant you? Grant justice to all of your chosen ones who have cried out to him night and day. Don't you know he's going to answer all our prayers? My gosh, intercession coming from the Philippines, Australia, and China, and, and uh, Europe, and uh, Taiwan, and Asia, all over, South Africa, North Africa, Israel. I mean, everybody's been praying about this. They have been crying out to the just judge. And I just want to encourage you, keep praying, keep praising. Don't get offended. It's okay if you've had doubt and unbelief. Quit lose, listening to things that are negative. Start listening to what God is saying. And I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And the scripture goes on to say, God will give swift justice to those who don't give up. I want you to say in the comments right now, I want you to put your name down there. And I had, I had them do this in House of David, where we actually wrote on an offering envelope their full name. And their full name, right? Go ahead, but put it in the comments if you're operating with the comments. Put your full name and say, I will not give up. Okay. So be ever praying. Say, I'll be praying. Ever expecting. Go ahead, say in there, I'll be expecting. Just like the widow was with the judge. That's who we are. Just like the widow was. And it goes on to say, yet the son of man comes back. Will he find persist persistent faith in his people? And you need to say, yes, yes. I am one of persistent faith. Right next to your name, say, Kurt has persistent faith. Right there, Mary has persistent faith. 
be part of that persistent faith. Amen. Now, the reason I put there so today is this. When people get scared and people get fearful, one of the things they do, I've just been doing this 30 years, people get nervous and they start hoarding, okay? Toilet paper, food, water, I think you need to be prepared. But one of the other things they do is they start hoarding money. And the problem with hoarding money in times like this is you are about to have a tremendous breakthrough in your authority that that which is written in God's book, in the book of remembrance, there's a book of remember, remembrance in Malachi chapter three. It says, they are mine, says the Lord. And on that day, these are my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his son that serves him. It's Malachi three seventeen, And they shall again discern between righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one that does not serve God. And that's in verse 17. But here's the key. In verse 16, it says, and those who feared the Lord and spoke to one another, that's what we're doing. We're speaking to one another. The Lord listened and heard them. He's hearing what we're saying right now. Praise God. And he says, they will listen that heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditated on his name. So see, that's what the widow woman did. She was meditating on his, on, on his goodness. She was persistent. She was knocking. She did not give up. And she, like, like Jesus said to the disciples, please don't get offended by what I'm doing right now. You don't have to know every detail. You don't know what the miracle path is. It's great if we have some information, but the Lord is perfecting faith and trust in the relationship right now, more than prophetic gifting to know exactly how it's gonna go down. This is gonna go down, but here's the key, and this is why I put up so today. And those of you that know me and watch, I never put up so today. Very often, if we take an offering, I'll put up so today, maybe for five minutes or something like that. But the reason I put it up here, this is the prophetic word. The enemy is trying to remove your name from the book of remembrance. Because if you read Malachi chapter 3, 16 and 17, what it is, is that book of remembrance are for those who are God blessers, not God robbers. Those that do not bring tithes and offerings are not in the book of remembrance because the scripture says you are cursed with the curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring your tithes into the storehouse. So the Lord wants to protect you, open up the windows of heaven, pour out such a blessing. But the, one of the things that the Lord told me to tell you today, you need to sow today. Right now, you need to sow your most generous seed. I'll tell you why. Because you need to make sure your name is in the book of remembrance as we transition from this side of Egypt on the dry place into the promised land. We're getting ready to, to so to say, uh, move in the spirit. I had a friend of mine that's a prophet. He sent me a word today about that we were really at the Jordan and that the priest's feet were in, were in, the, uh, in the water. And I really believe that because the priest's feet are actually the only ones that got wet. Their feet are in the water. But yet the Jordan River at that time was like almost like a lake. It was backed up. So it was full. The water was muddy and they couldn't see the bottom. Plus it would have been too deep to cross. But the priest had to put their feet in the water and wait on the water to lower and so they could see where to take the next step. That's where we are. I, I, I believe that... that uh, that my friend that, that was the prophet that, that texted that to me this morning, that's a right on now word because that's where we are. I feel like the priests that their feet are in the water and we're having to wait for things to part so that we can cross over on dry land and the priests are gonna pass through first. But the key is, is that you want to be, can't make sure your name is in the book. Don't let the enemy trick you by not sowing and not giving and, 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 uh, and having your name hindered from being in the book of life. Now, listen, I'm speaking to you this. And this isn't about the finances, but isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that we're in this situation where fear is trying to grip the entire body of Christ? People are concerned about being canceled and, and isolated 
And, and, uh, but yet we need to protect our position in the Lord that our name is in his book and we can get tricked and say, well, I guess what? I won't sow a seed until after this is over. When we get past the 20th and I see exactly how this is going to go and the word that, that rabbi spoke and others spoke that when that comes to pass, then I'll sow and I'll keep moving on. That is a, tra a trap of the enemy because I will tell you this, delayed obedience is disobedience to sow your seed. But here's the biggest thing is delayed sowing creates a delayed harvest. You're going to need more money from the Lord in the next 90 days than you did in the last 90 days. Way more money because this shift is going to be expensive. There's going to be a lot that goes down. Just like for us at Kurt Landry Ministries, all our expenses across the board in Israel are going up because of this COVID and because of the situation. Everything is increasing. So we have an increased need. You have an increased need. The Lord has an increased need. And that's why I put up today, sow today. If you'll sow today and you'll sow your seed, you'll be surprised where the breakthrough comes. Because the scripture says you don't know what may cause your breakthrough, what you do with your right hand or your left hand. But I do know this, as a cheerful giver into good soil, the Lord is going to give to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And we need the breakthrough now. I think this is a great opportunity for some courageous, cheerful giving because you're sowing your seed by faith, not knowing exactly what's gonna happen in the future. And that is when you have like these super faith moments to sow a super seed to break through into the supernatural provision. And that's why I put up so today. And uh, so I think it's the first time I've ever had it up for any length of time. You know, our ministry, uh, we, we've already made, I don't, I don't want to go into all of it, but we've made a commitment to Israel. They need us right now. And, and we're going to take care of the poor. The scripture says, Jesus said that when you do it unto the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. And we're not breaking our commitment. We're going to keep it, but I would like to expand it and be able to keep it. And you can be a part of that. You can be the hero and you can get the breakthrough and you can get the blessing and you'll get the peace of God after you sow. Go online, sow right now, and watch the peace of God going. Whew, man, I read Malachi 3. Guess what? I'm in that book of remembrance. I bring tithes and offerings. God's going to open up the windows of heaven. He's going to protect me, and he's going to give me favor. That's the biggest blessing you can have right now. Anyway, I hope this has helped you. We loved you. love you. Thank you for your prayers. So many kind gifts. Christy and I are doing great. We are trusting in the Lord. We are still believing in everything the Lord had to say. We don't know how it's going to go down. We never knew how it was going to go down. That's not how it works. I just know that we've heard from God and it's all going to work itself out. Are we going to go through some challenging times? Yes, but let's go through it together, not alone. Let's do it and let our faith grow. Let's do it and let our intimacy with Jesus grow. Let us do it finding the Jewish roots of our faith and let the biggest reward through this storm be to find our identity and that it's Christ in you. That's our hope and glory. I love you. We bless you. If this has helped you, hit that share button and let's grow this network, okay? Let's grow it. And I'm believing the Lord's going to breathe on it, grow it, protect it, and let's move forward and believe God for a miracle. God loves you and God loves all the nations of the earth and God loves America. God bless America and shalom.